Hi guys, I thought I'd uh, stop sharing that wonderful backdrop uh, and say thank you all of you for joining us in this lovely afternoon in, the, in our wonderful region, or should I say lovely very early morning in your part of the world, Eric. <laughs> Um, guys, I'd just like to introduce you. Um, my name is Lorraine Longato. I'm an innovation evangelist, uh, innovation advisor across Southeast Asia, generally working with accounts across this region for innovative new technologies, uh, none least of which is one that we spoke about last week, being blockchain and how we're applying it in uh, sustainability areas. And we spoke to, uh, I believe last time we spoke to James Bale, who is the new director of um, Green Token, uh, one of our new spin-off companies. And to connect those two, I thought I'd introduce the agri side of the world, uh, someone who probably needs no introduction in our organisation, uh, but, but Eric Sonich has uh, got an in-depth uh, capability and rather than me introducing him, I would like for him to introduce himself. Eric, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Yes, uh, hello Lorraine. Um, so first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, welcome from my nice little virtual office here in, in Germany. Um, yeah, so believe it or not, uh, it's been actually 20 years uh, this year that I've been with SAP now. Um, in the first few years, I've done uh, consulting for a couple of uh, specialized industry solutions. Um, and then I transitioned uh, to solution management, where I have held a number of positions now over um, over the different years in for different solutions and also for different industries. Um, I also moved um, for SAP to the US West Coast and then back to Germany. And uh, currently, I'm the uh, industry. Yeah, I'm in industry solution management for consumer um, products and agri business. And I'm focusing on sustainability, traceability, and consumer transparency. Um, and I've been working now with a number of companies uh, from the food supply chain on these topics over the past three years. Um, and I've taken their requirements to uh, developing a new solution, uh, which we call SAP Logistics Business Network Material Traceability, uh, for which I'm now the responsible solution owner. So it sits on your head. Yes. <laughs> that's fantastic. Could you tell us a little bit more about, about that solution? I mean, that's a pretty strong background when you think about it, 20 years as well. <laughs> so you've obviously know the ecosystem really, really well. Um, but, but can you, and, and I, as I said earlier, and you've, you saw the recording uh, for James Bell's presentation of Green Token, um, yeah. could you tell us a little bit more about um, something that you're, proud of and something that you've worked on um, because obviously in developing this kind of capability there's a lot of work that goes into different customers um, you also uh, have your hands on the ground as it were um, so you've gotten to work with quite a few people especially um, now with as it, as it pertains to the the product that you're managing um, two things that I'd like to ask you firstly a bit about the product and, and mm -hmm. what, what, what it entails. And secondly, something that you're proud of in being the owner of something so, so strong. Sure, yeah. Um, so, well, first of all, um, you know, because you mentioned uh, James, I think what uh, James Wheel has achieved uh, so far with Green Token, I think is really remarkable. Um, he's been passionate about traceability of sustainable uh, produced commodities for years now and um, I'm sure Green Token will play a key role in prom promoting sustainable commodities in the future um, and I've been um, working with him on and off also on uh, the questions of uh, how do we use blockchain for uh, tracking well in his case commodities in my uh, in my case um, uh, food and other materials so um, yeah we have um, had a, a good journey together if you will uh, over the last um, probably three years or so um, and like the work James has done uh, when I worked with uh, various food companies uh, across the food supply chain um, we also had sustainability as one of the main focus areas next to building consumer trust uh, and transparency and also food safety and um, really when we set out to define a cross uh, supply chain traceability solution, um, one of the big questions was how do we build the solution in a way that companies from all stages of the supply chain 
would be um, would be willing to share data about um, you know their ingredients, their components, uh, their products with everyone uh, with everyone else in the supply chain um, all the way through the consumer. And uh, in my experience, this is not not something uh, companies uh, usually do, and it cannot be taken for granted that they are actually willing to share that kind of information about qualities, about other aspects of their of their products with uh with uh, with a sometimes anonymous supply chain who they don't know uh, who is actually going to use the, the the information so just like james uh we looked at using blockchain as the foundation of the solution and um you know you asked me you know what i'm proud of and i think we can now actually proudly say that we are one of the first um, enterprise software companies that has a standard um, enterprise solution allowing companies to build a trusted network uh, to share food provenance data, um, and I think that's something uh, that's really a, a great achievement because uh, when we set out uh, on this journey, uh, the team we worked with didn't have a, back, uh, a blockchain background, um, and also it was quite uh, quite a journey. We took the the the, the customers along uh, with us. Oh, that's amazing! And and what what sort of a customer are we talking about here? What what would be the story that we're talking about? Yeah, so customers could be um, um, food manufacturers, um, so finished uh, finished food items could also be companies more on the on the fresh food side, if you will. Um, could be um, um, could be in intermediaries um, who are you know um, uh, producing uh, pre-processed, if you will, ingredients. Um, could be anything. Um, but maybe, if, you know, I think uh, an, an example, a, a real life story is always uh, uh, the best thing to, to tell the story. So um, if you want, um, I have a, a small uh, video, uh, just over, just not even uh, a minute. So if you, if you want, we can share that with the audience uh, to sure. see how the technology here really can help everyone in the supply chain. Okay, um, far away and please let me know in the chat if you can all hear and see we track every piece of fish. The best part of this is how easy it is for the consumer to use a cell phone to scan the QR code and it tells them exactly the type of fish, when it was caught, where it was caught, and if it's fair trade certified. Okay. Yeah. So that that's uh that that was a very short introduction video. Uh, what I might just do on the chat is actually give everyone the more longer longer protracted story so that everyone can actually see the detail that went in there. So I've just included that in the chat for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you know to to give you a bit more um, background on the story. So Bumblebee Foods, the company that uh, you've just uh, so you just saw in the video is um, is now using our uh, logistics bet, uh, business network material traceability solution to track the fish they are selling in uh, mostly North America all the way back to to Asia uh, mostly Indonesia actually so you saw you know small um, uh, fishermen basically um, uh, uh, catching catching tuna on the islands of uh, or off the islands of uh, Indonesia um, and what um, what Bumblebee achieved here is that they worked with uh, with everyone uh, every company basically everyone involved in the supply chain to share the data on the fish uh, how it was handled how it was processed the, the journey that it took uh, to the US um, and that now enables Bumblebee to uh, basically make the entire journey of the fish uh, transparent uh, to the consumers, but also to, to customers like um, food retailers uh, and restaurants. And I think that's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great sustainability story because um, it's all about, um, um, you know, avoiding overfishing, uh, making sure that they promote uh, fair trade products, that uh, fishermen get fairly paid, um, all of that, and obviously also uh, about food safety. Oh, there we go. So we have someone who's raised their hand deliberately when you just started to talk about that. Um, uh, Angus, uh, uh, Angus, would you like to ask a question at this point in time? 
I've just um, asked, you can unmute now. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Hi, yeah, no, I was, I, was, I was interested with the bumblebee foods example, and uh, here in New Zealand, we've got a lot of uh, uh, similar with manuka honey and uh, in, in the providence of that. Uh, so I w is interested from a market value in proposition, how you can see that particular model apply to, to a New Zealand proposition. That's a great question. I'll, I look, I'll let um, Eric go for that first, um, if you don't mind, and, uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll finish off if, if I have anything to add. Thank yeah, you, I'm just, I, I'm just not sure. I couldn't quite uh, hear it very well. So the question was how we would apply what to uh, New the, Zealand? The manuka so honey. He was saying about manuka honey in New Zealand. It's a very unique uh, product to, to their industry. Um, and obviously there's a lot of, uh, you know, labels that get slammed on and, and try to claim that brand, but it is a significant brand. I guess no different to someone's calling something, uh, say, from the French wine champagne and so forth. So wow. how can, say, industries like the New Zealand industries, the Manuka honey industry, uh, utilise the bumblebee story to protect their brand? How, how would that work? Is that okay. right, Angus? <laughs> Absolutely. You got it. Good. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think there, there are two ways, really. Um, one of uh, which, obviously, is to do something like uh, Bumblebee has done when they worked with, uh, with everyone in the supply chain who um, is also, or, or, or of, in, in whose best interest it should be to make sure that, that uh, it, it is, uh, or they can make it transparent to the consumer, to the, uh, to the customer, um, where, where the product is coming from, um, how it was produced, um, to, to show the story of a, um, of a genuine um, product. And if they can uh, get everyone to, to uh, work with them and share their data on logistics, business network, material traceability, then uh, you can make it so transparent that for everyone who's not able or, or who is basically claiming something they, uh, they actually don't have, it becomes uh, very difficult to um, basically tell uh, a similar uh, transparent um, story that uh, people will actually believe in. I think mm. that's one. And then a, another um, uh, opportunity is that you work with, um, with a partner um, like uh, ScanTrust. Uh, you guys can, can look them up after um, after the call. Um, they're a partner of ours. They have a um, unique barcoding technology. Uh, maybe I'll talk about it uh, a, little a little more uh, later as well. But um, with the, the work they've done, you can really prove that the product uh, you're buying is actually genuine because um, you have um, unique, not copyable uh, barcodes. Uh, so it becomes very difficult uh, for someone to actually claim something um, they don't really have. Uh, so mm. speak of anti-counterfeiting. Yeah, and that's, yeah. and that's exactly what uh, another customer of ours in this region has done. Um, and, and that was more from provenance of um, uh, counterfeit drugs, right? There's about 30% mm. of the drugs in this region, um, our region, Asia Pacific, that are said to be counterfeit about 30 percent and that's in cancer care yeah. so Zulik pharmaceutical actually implemented this technology through the qr code and they created the app on our platform to actually track and trace all of their drugs right. so they have given channels and given clinicians that that administer the cancer drugs so when you go into the hospital your app from that customer scans the the downloads the app you register that your treatment at that hospital and you scan the drugs before you actually ingest them into your body. Now, you might think, well, what value is that? Well, there's usually about three different drugs that you have to take in cancer care. If one of those drugs is counterfeit, what do you think the probability of survival is? I'd yeah. say pretty much zero. Yeah. Um, and, and as someone who survived cancer twice myself, um, it, it's actually heightened to me uh, when somebody says that I now have a way of assuring something that's going to impact my life. So you've got that extreme from pharmaceutical care, and you've also got a consortia that we've helped generate here in this region called Sustain, which is through Indonesia and Malaysia, and we're actually doing it for palm oil. 
so palm plants. So right. we're, we're, we've got multiple farmers uh, that we're now piloting the program uh, and they're registering and you'd say, um, well, well, think about it. It goes into nearly every product, consumer product, and it's actually contributing to deforestation. So what better way to castigate the recalcitrant individuals than to lower the value of uncertified supply chains and escalate the value of certified supply chains. So yeah. I suppose that's generally the real capability of this technology. Uh, am I right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I think the sustain uh, the sustain example is a great example. Um, and I, I like a year ago, so I read an article about um, how much of food in in uh, Douglas Africa is actually counterfeited uh, to the to the extreme uh, degree where it's actually harmful to eat it. So it's not just you know some wrong label. So you know you eat uh, say. Um, pork that is not organic even though it says organic i mean that's uh, that's not good but um you know it won't kill you but uh, actually in africa uh, they 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 counterfeit it uh, so much that it's actually harmful for people to consume so um i think um with hopefully with the with the use of technology we will be able to well probably not uh, eliminate this for good but uh, at least um reduce it significantly over, over, uh, over time. Okay. Okay. That's, that's great. Okay. So I hope that answered, uh, answered your question, Angus. Um, uh, with that being said, uh, and I'm just thinking about just those two stories because they're close to me because I'm involved in those in this part of the world. Um, and you will obviously be involved in quite a few agri, uh, agri um, engagements globally as the leader of this capability. Um, I was just curious, are you seeing traction um, in your market? Because I know in this part of the world, especially because of uh, we have a big push towards plastics uh, being, uh, we're having a lot of clients asking us about tracking and tracing plastics. Um, we recently had a global packaging challenge uh, that came up with some really great hacks in this area. Um, how is the, how are you seeing, because to me, agri, especially where you're food, Food is a staple in our lives. And right. I expect that it's something that we're getting a lot of interest from our clients. Um, can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, so if, uh, in terms of um, traction in the market, uh, definitely. So, I mean, if you follow a bit, um, you know, how technology is being used for, for traceability, uh, for transparency in different uh, industries, not only food, um, you know, there's so many um, use cases now that come to light, if you will, uh, of companies um, having having implemented uh, technology, not only from SAP, uh, you know, others are also uh, obviously active in this market. Uh, so definitely there is uh, quite a bit, um, quite a bit of traction and uh, we'll see a lot more of it. So, and one of, one of the great examples, uh, obviously is Green Token, you mentioned sustain. Uh, sustain. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, um, I know with Green Token, you've uh, covered it in a, in a previous session, but maybe for people who weren't able to attend that session, uh, Green Token basically will provide proof uh, of sustainably produced commodities um, also like palm oil, which you mentioned in the sustain example, but also uh, cocoa, um, coffee, uh, certain conflict minerals. Uh, so um, that will be, uh, I think this will be huge um, in the coming years because there's so many companies that are struggling with this. Uh, if you think of the, the chocolate uh, industry, um, you know, they, they are always uh, accused of, of um, not taking care of child labor in their supply chain. So it's, it's, it's huge for them. Um, uh, and then if you also look at uh, two other examples that we have uh, with SAP partners, uh, I mentioned ScanTrust. Um, with their unique barcoding technology, uh, which will actually help manufacturers not only to trace uh, where the products are used when consumers scan those barcodes, um, but also to help counterfeiting, uh, because consumers uh, with that technology can verify the authenticity of the product uh, based uh, um, using the barcodes uh, that cannot be, be copied um, uh, based on their uh, unique technology. 
Mm. And another partner that we have, uh, um, it's uh, the partner is called Sine Qua Non. Uh, their product is called uh, Yoy, uh, Y O Y. Um, they have built a great case with a German dairy company, which allows consumers to exactly see from which farms uh, the milk comes uh, that they buy. So in that case, um, you know, um, these are all small farms uh, in the so-called uh, German area of the Black Forest, and consumers uh, can see uh, the milk that was collected uh, on what day, um, uh, even how many cows a certain farm has, which family is running the farm, um, and, and so on. So it's, it's a really nice, uh, really nice use case uh, that shows um, you know, the extent of transparency that uh, you can actually uh, give consumers or, or you know, also, uh, I guess, corporate um, customers uh, with technology like that. That is amazing. And when you think about it, uh, I literally hosted a webinar earlier this morning, uh, which was about trust in ecosystems and so forth. And I tried to make, if this can conveniently be possible, economics fun. Um, so so uh, we, we talked about the burning platforms of, of, of social fabric and what's happening in the world when you talk about in slavery, slavery, modern slavery act, etc. And some of the stories you just mentioned. And then, of course, you look at the economic downturn that we've had that's impacting people's livelihoods and jobs. And, of course, the fact that you just mentioned dairy and definitely for our New Zealand uh, attendees, we have been doing some interesting stuff with some of the some of your brands and no need to say any names there. But they're looking at this, um, this what we call farm to fork mindset, whereby which we can actually track everything for its life cycle for your assuredness. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and that's really powerful because um, you want to know that if you are spending that extra two, three dollars for something that you say is ethically sourced because your conscience right. is is doing so, then that's what you want to be able to prove with that transaction occurring. And more importantly, if it's fair trade, like the Bumblebee story, I think you told me something when we first spoke that blew my mind, that Bumblebee was, when they launched, they actually had retailers coming to them to that's actually right. stock their product, right? Yeah. 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 So that's the power of using technology that can imbue trust, right? And so therefore you have that social uh, you you have also have that economical impact and obviously that commercial reality of the economic downturn. People looking at accelerators and looking at things, but they also are conscious that they have to be good corporate social citizens, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, I think that's amazing. So, Eric, I, I, I just want to make sure that we have at least a few minutes for questions, two or three minutes, um, uh, because I've seen one another, actually a few more attendees ask questions. Um raise their hands. Um, what I'd like to uh, maybe say is what do you see the future of this technology that you've just spoken about um, and, and technology in general in helping things like the planet, the environment and the, the you know, the efficacy of corporates? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and of course, I don't have a, a crystal ball either. But um, I believe that making use of technology for uh, corporate projects to protect the environment, uh, to improve people's lives uh, will be just, um, just one part of the ongoing trend of uh, digitalization. Um, you know, if you look at it, um, many companies, they have started their digital, digitalization projects mostly to to increase efficiencies to make um to make uh, to if you think of process automation uh, basically um and as companies now see the success of these projects uh, and they get familiar with technologies like machine learning artificial artificial intelligence yeah. blockchain iot I believe they will put these technologies at work to make uh, them good corporate citizen, yep. citizens um, um, by, by applying them to uh, projects like, you know, what we talked about, uh, food traceability um, and, and sustainability. Uh, you know, going back to the example that I made earlier with chocolate, um, where companies um, are constantly, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a never ending story where they always get ac accused of not doing enough um, for, um, or to fight ch child labor. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's one of the areas where we have also now worked with, uh, with companies that actually do quite a bit uh, against that. 
um, to to help them actually um, improve their um, their efforts, but also be able to um, to actually prove it um, that that uh, they're doing something, and that mm. uh, obviously they're not able not able to uh, also raise it for good, but at least in their supply chain they have control over it, and and they will do whatever they can. That's great. We have one question from Thivaga. I've actually put you on the panel, Thivaga. If you want to un unmute yourself, you can actually ask us a question in the last two minutes that we have left. And I don't think we're going to get to the other other question. Um, would you go okay. ahead, Thivaga? Can you hear me? Yes, clearly. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much, Lona. I think I put my question in the panel as well. Oh, thank you. So we're putting uh, more working on the like a pineapple banana industry. You know, right? Pineapple, you make into juices, right? You yep. cut the pineapple. You make it the juices and the cans and ship to the market. So how can you trace the fruit from the soil to the market when the fruits are uh, made into the cans and ship yeah. to the entire globe? Well, that, that, in essence, that, and Eric, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but in essence, that is the sustained concept. Um, it's yes. a similar sort of gathering um, and uh, using multiple farmers to a centralized cooperative and the mills to process. It's a similar sort of a concept. So uh, what I'm going to do is put our details to, uh, to all of you um, because I know that we're coming to the last minute and we're probably not going to be answering that in great detail. And we could probably give you um, a lot more details of how that can, that can work for you. Um, also, Eric, you would be the key person to speak to with that kind of capability with the agri product, right? Absolutely. Um, and uh, just like you said, you know, sustain. Um, but I think also Green Token will be, yes. will be uh, very well equipped uh, to, um, to, uh, for this pineapple um, example. So. Great. So, so we do James, have some options James is a good contact. That's great. So we do have some options for you and we can definitely give you the right contacts if you're interested to the guy. We put our contact details there. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, for that. Um, guys, I'm just realising that we've literally just hit our 30 minute speed chat and the reason why I keep them so short is so that we can at least filter a few questions, um, uh, ask a few questions, inform you and leave our details for you to reach out. And for that, I'd have to say, um, Thank you, for Eric, for what, getting you, up Lauren. so early Thanks for having me. <laughs> in Germany. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate all the information you provided. And equally, um, guys, uh, we, we do have access to some of these recordings and we'll see if we can um, post them out to some of the attendees there if you want to listen to this again. But for, that, for now, I have to say thank you, Eric. Thank you all of our panelists, uh, all of our attendees for showing up. And sorry that I didn't get to the last two questions. I'll take note of those. Um, but yeah, we look forward to the next session of our quick power chats. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for Bye. attending. Thank you Thank for you. having me. <laughs> Definitely.